I am about to give you an inside scoop on research that hasn't even been published yet that will help you know if an injury is just around the corner, even before symptoms emerge. Can you imagine having this insight? It could be a game changer for your running endeavors. I learned this scoop after talking with researcher Eric Hegedus, who highlights four early warning signs. And like I said, it will show you if an injury is lurking even before the first signs of injury. Before I talk about these four domains, I want to let you know that this channel is here to help you train smarter, rehab smarter, and run smarter. So if you want a helping hand, hit subscribe and keep up to date. Now, before we focus on the injury prevention side of things, I want to help you interpret any current symptoms you're dealing with, because it can be confusing. Sometimes pain can be okay, and even necessary in certain situations. Let's go through an example. Say you were running your weekend long run and you started noticing some tightness in your calf. You keep running and continue assessing the situation. The symptoms don't get worse, but they don't get better either. You complete your run and continue monitoring throughout the day. The pain goes away, but stiffness persists. Two days later, you go for another run and immediately you feel an increased tightness in that calf muscle. What do you do? Should you persist through the run? Should you modify the run, say backing off the speed or duration? Or do you play it safe and cancel the run altogether? Let's decipher situations like these. The way I see it, symptoms are broken down into three categories. We have injury, which are symptoms that are quite worrying and worrying enough to prompt intervention. We have the innocent niggles, which can be pain and symptoms, but aren't serious and don't require intervention. And then we have DOMS, which is delayed onset muscle soreness, which is necessary soreness in order for you to get stronger. When symptoms arise, it is really important to know which of these symptoms fall into which category. We do this so that you can act accordingly. Each type can have unique characteristics, but the tricky thing is they also have overlapping characteristics. So allow me to explain with a Venn diagram. Let's talk about symptom location to start. An injury and a niggle can present in the muscle, but is usually highly localized. This means that you can often pinpoint an area fairly accurately. This is different to DOMS, which will also present in the muscle, but be quite widespread. Pain localized in a tendon or a ligament can often be an injury or a niggle, but pain over bone is often taken very seriously. Next is the onset of pain, as in when symptoms first arise. As the DOMS acronym suggests, the delayed onset means that it'll typically appear 24 to 48 hours after an intense bout of exercise. The tricky thing is an injury may also appear the next day, but this is when it's useful to cross-reference these characteristics. For example, if symptoms first arise the day after activity and is widespread through the muscle, it's most likely DOMS. But if pain comes on the next day and is localized in the tendon, it's likely an injury. Next, we have characteristics and can vary between sharp pain and dull pain, tightness and soreness when stretching or activating the muscle, and also weird things like pins and needles and burning. And lastly, we have a big differentiator, and that is the duration or persistence of symptoms. DOMS will classically last two to three days, Niggles, only a couple of seconds or minutes, and injuries, they can last for weeks to months. So I'm talking to you. If you have had a niggle lasting for a couple of weeks, it is classified as an injury. Don't convince yourself otherwise. So now you know what your symptoms are and you can take the appropriate action steps. If it is DOMS, no action required. This will settle within a few days. If it is a niggle, again, no action required but might be helpful to document the symptoms in case it pops up again in the future. But if symptoms are fitting into the injury zone, action is required. This might mean getting it assessed by a medical professional or taking the appropriate changes in your training schedule. Once you implement an intervention and begin some course of treatment, you should see noticeable improvements in most cases week by week. If you've had it for a very, very long time, maybe fortnight by fortnight or month by month. If you're not seeing this trend, go back to the drawing board, get it reassessed or change something in your plan to start noticing this trend. Let's go back to the situation with my calf. 
since my symptoms came on during a run and persisted into my next run, this puts me in an injury territory. So if I wanted to be on the cautious side, I could swap out my run for say a cross training day, or I could try modifying the run and again, reassess. For example, I can move away from my zero drop shoes and wear ones with a greater heel drop. I could slow down my speed, even implementing some walking intervals, and I can make a conscious effort to avoid uphill running. Each of these decisions will reduce the load on the calf and hopefully see that steady improvement. If not, I need to go back to the drawing board. If you are still unsure of your symptoms and which category it falls into, let me know your situation in the comments section. I'll be happy to help you out. Okay, now we know what to do if symptoms do arise, let's take one step further in the injury prevention direction and talk about Eric's four domains, which if not checked, may result in an injury just around the corner. Physical isn't the only thing that matters. There's a whole range of psychological variables that are associated with whether you get injured. But you do have to pay attention to things like if you are feeling chronically fatigued, you are headed down the path to injury. If you are feeling more stressed than usual, you're at greater risk for injury if your sleep quality is poor. If you are noticing great muscle soreness, it is not a weakness to say this is gonna be an easy day when you're experiencing all of those things. So my energy level is lower, I feel more fatigued. I'm definitely more stressed in my life or because of work. My sleep quality is suffering and I'm super sore after training lately. That should set off an alarm bell that you need to back down a little bit in your training, not because you're weak or not because you're not mentally strong enough, but because your system is very vulnerable at that time. And so you do not push yourself to your maximum workout when your system is vulnerable. That's how you get injured. And like I said, this is unpublished research. You're getting an inside scoop right here. So hopefully this opens your eyes to training and lifestyle changes that may result in injury. If you are in trouble in all four of these domains at the same time, immediately take action and get them under control, such as sleeping better or doing something that lowers your stress. If you can't make these adjustments, dramatically reduce your training loads until these metrics change in your favor. Like I said earlier, if you have any injury questions, let me know in the comments section. I'll be releasing crucial information like this even before the research is published. So hit subscribe and stay ahead of the curve. Good luck with your training this week.